George Schumacher from Magerberg will talk to us about Weil Peterson currents. Well, first of all, I would <clears throat> like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation and for giving me the opportunity to give a talk. Um, I'm trying to give a slightly more uh, a general talk. And the, uh, I'm talking about moduli spaces of complex manifolds, holomorphic vector bundles, and related uh, objects. And it's about classifying holomorphic families, local holomorphic families, and uh, what it means that uh, uh, fibers are isomorphic. Well, the classical situation of uh, compact uh, Riemann uh, surfaces of a certain genus uh, is as follows. There is the uh, Teichmüller family uh, of marked uh, compact Riemann surfaces, and the uh, uh, a surface represents a point in Teichmüller uh, space, and the tangent space over the Teichmüller space at a certain point can be uh, identified with the space of harmonic Beltrami differentials. And uh, the dual space is known uh, to be the space of quadratic holomorphic differentials. Now, it was observed by André Weil that one can uh, put a natural L2 inner product on this space, uh, which carries a natural uh, uh, which gives rise to a Hermitian metric on a uh, Teichmüller space. And also the uh, Teichmüller uh, modular group, which identifies points in Teichmüller space whose fibers are isomorphic after forgetting the uh, marking, that this also respects this inner uh, product. So the idea is to have an L2 inner product with, on uh, the moduli space. And uh, the uh, inner product uh, had been uh, considered before uh, by uh, Peterson. And let me see. And here is the inner product, say, in terms of quadratic holomorphic differentials. Uh, and then on the dual space, it's uh, the induced one. So here we have two quadratic holomorphic differentials. We multiply these. And then we divide the whole thing by uh, the Poincaré uh, metric. And what we get is a function times a volume element. And so this is an inner product. And this is exactly what uh, previously had been uh, considered by uh, Hans Peterson, also uh, in a slightly uh, general, uh, more general situation. Um, so we observe that there is uh, a crucial role of the uh, Poincaré uh, metric, the metric on uh, Riemann surfaces uh, of uh, a constant curvature minus one. I should say that we here uh, restrict ourselves to the genus uh, P larger or equal to two. Okay. Uh, okay. As I said, the Weil-Peterson form is invariant and it descends to the moduli space. And the theorem of Wolpert somehow indicates what one would like to expect. And uh, so there is Mumford's line bundle, lambda p, and it turned out that the Weil-Peterson form is the first uh, churn form of the uh, Mumford's line bundle, lambda equipped with a certain uh, metric, uh, so-called Quillen metric. Then one knows that the Weil-Peterson form extends to the the linear Mumford compactification as a positive current. So we come to this uh, point. Uh, the Weil-Peterson current uh, near singular uh, Riemann surfaces, say Mumford curves, uh, possesses a, a continuous uh, potential. And this uh, gives, is closely related to a continuous Hermitian metric on uh, lambda p. And, uh, Moreover, the boundary in this case is known uh, to consist of a moduli space of punctured Riemann surfaces of lower genus, and uh, uh, also the restriction of the extended current exists, and it will be 
uh, related to the Weil Peterson form on the boundary, because uh, the boundary is also uh, closely related uh, to a moduli space of uh, punctured uh, Riemann surfaces. Now, uh, I'm well talking about an analytic uh, program uh, to understand uh, moduli uh, spaces, and we will see that all of these questions are related, and uh, the, met the methods will be different, but in a similar spirit. So the idea, first of all, is that uh, uh, we will have to look at complex manifolds, holomorphic vector bundles. It says line bundles. It also should be uh, better vector bundles with distinguished metrics. Then uh, the idea is to uh, produce an intrinsic Hermitian metric on the base of a holomorphic family. And once it is given by it in an intrinsic way, it will automatically descend to the moduli space because there is the map from the uh, base of a uh, universal deformation, in this case, a bit from a Kohanishi space to the moduli space. And uh, uh, locally, uh, this map exists, and it is uh, given by the uh, action of a finite uh, group. So uh, this is like uh, the Teichmüller uh, space, or better, uh, the uh, isotropy group of, uh, of the Teichmüller modular group uh, acting on Teichmüller space. But uh, here, in general, this is only a local picture. All of these things have to be uh, patched together. Then one would like to prove a fiber integral formula for the weil peterson form, which implies the Kähler property. So what is a fiber integral formula? It would be like uh, the following. We are talking about, say, a, a family of uh, uh, fibers of a certain uh, dimension, say, uh, dimension uh, D. And then we are looking at a D plus 1, D plus 1, uh, closed form and the fiber integral over a variety of uh, complex dimension D will provide us uh, with a form of dimension uh, 1. And the construction is compatible with taking exterior um, derivatives so we can immediately see if we are integrating a closed form then the result will be automatically closed and there is no uh, Nothing to worry about the Kähler property. It will automatically follow uh, from a fiber integral. And we will see uh, a couple of examples. Then the next one other issue is to compute uh, the curvature of the weil peterson form. Uh, I won't talk about this today. And uh, then the other further issue is uh, there is a mechanism uh, to produce um, a certain uh, line bundle lambda, which plays the role of the classical line bundle lambda p of uh, Mumford. And so that up to a numerical uh, factor, the weil peterson form uh, will be the curvature form of a uh, uh, Hermitian line bundle, Hermitian holomorphic uh, line bundle. Uh, these factors, which I'm going to drop, are usually made from powers of 2 pi uh, and maybe a factorial might occur. So the um, points um, I will emphasize, put emphasis to, on today is the following. Um, algebraic geometry will uh, provide us, uh, in most cases, with a compactification of a moduli space as a, say, reduced complex space and uh, maybe one also knows that this space is Moishe's on. Um, and uh, so what we want to do is we want to see uh, how, to, how we can extend the weil peterson form to a compactification of the moduli space. Now, for these higher dimensional uh, situations and more complicated objects, uh, it is not so clear what the compactification of the moduli space uh, will be. Uh, so far, all what we have to do is, while well, we have a certain boundary 
and then the boundary has to be uh, blown up uh, unless one can describe the boundary of a modular space also to uh, represent uh, degenerate objects in a certain sense. But this is not, not the issue here. And uh, then we have an application. Uh, once we can extend the Weil-Peterson form as a positive current, uh, then uh, we know that the uh, line bundle lambda, uh, sorry, line bundle lambda here also extends as a line bundle and the Quillen metric can be extended uh, as a singular uh, metric. Now, what does here positive uh, current mean? Usually, we, the modular space will be a reduced complex space and uh, then if we talk about uh, currents, it is better uh, to, to provide the modular space uh, with the normalization and to work with normalized spaces. And uh, then still a um, positive current is an object uh, which um, possesses a DD bar potential. And this DD bar potential uh, will be a plurisubharmonic function. Um, then in the next step, one can kind of undo the uh, normalization uh, and uh, uh, push everything uh, down to the original space. Uh, so uh, there is a device uh, to normalize a bit, so to speak, which means we can undo the normalization um, on the moduli space. And on the boundary, uh, there will be something like a normalization. OK. Uh, so this will be the uh, application. And uh, then uh, from there on, we, we can uh, see that such a, a line bundle uh, lambda uh, will be ample modulo uh, the uh, compactifying divisor. OK. Uh, I already said we have a common spirit for all of these uh, problems, but the methods uh, will be uh, different. Okay. Uh, just plurisubharmonic. Yes. And this is all what I need for the extension theorem. Okay. Okay. So, um, as we say, as we already observed, we need the tangent spaces of the moduli space, or better, the tangent uh, spaces to the Koranishi space, which is uh, given by the uh, kodaira spencer map. So uh, these are here the uh, deformations over the double point, uh, so to speak, which are usually uh, a finite uh, dimensional vector space and some uh, cohomology, of, uh, cohomology of some kind. Okay, so what we are talking about are uh, the cases of stable holomorphic vector bundles, say do I D spaces, moduli spaces of canonically polarized manifolds, and families of polarized Calabi Yau manifolds. And uh, so, yeah, so we already observed we want an intrinsically defined Hermitian metric on the parameter space. And uh, then uh, here is uh, Volpott's uh, uh, next uh, theorem concerning the uh, uh, fiber uh, integration. Namely, if we have a holomorphic family of compact Riemann surfaces, it can be uh, uh, part of the Teichmüller space, but it need not have to be. Uh, then we have Poincare metrics on the fibers. These give rise uh, to metrics on the relative tangent bundle or the relative canonical bundle. So uh, the uh, 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 the first uh, churn form with respect uh, to the uh, Poincaré metric is meaningful. Uh, C squared will be integrated, and we are left with a one one form, which incidentally is the Weil Peterson form, and already we can read uh, off uh, the formula, the Kähler property. Okay, so as I said, we are looking for n plus one, n plus one forms. Uh, on compact uh, n-dimensional uh, manifolds uh, to, uh, to integrate. Um, so here is the uh, situation of moduli spaces of uh, stable holomorphic uh, vector bundles on Kähler manifolds. 
we begin with a compact Kähler uh, manifold, uh, a reduced uh, complex analytic space, and a family of uh, uh, stable holomorphic uh, vector bundles uh, with a family of uh, uh, Amit Einstein uh, metrics, which give us a, a metric uh, on the uh, holomorphic vector bundle on the total space. Uh, let F be the curvature form. Uh, as we know, the Kodaira Spencer map has values uh, in the first cohomology of the endomorphism bundle. And uh, this obviously now um, possesses a uh, natural LT, L2 inner product. And then comes a surprising uh, fact. Um, namely, if we take the curvature form of the metric on the total space, and if we contract it with a tangent vector coming from the base, what we get is the harmonic representative uh, of uh, a Kodaira Spencer class. So we would call such a thing harmonic uh, Kodaira Spencer uh, tensor, say. And this is the one to be integrated. And we know uh, these are just uh, those for which the inner product is uh, minimal if uh, we uh, run through the representatives of a, a Kodaira Spencer class. All right, here is the uh, fiber uh, integral uh, formula. So we are looking at the uh, second uh, churn character form of the endomorphism bundle. Uh, then we wedge it uh, with uh, the Kähler form to the power n minus one, and then we integrate along the fibers. And uh, what we get is a uh, form and incidentally the Weil-Peterson form. Um, I might, uh, say that this formula here is in spirit a similar one which we will see later for families of uh, canonically polarized varieties or kalabi yau manifolds, where also there is a close uh, relationship um, uh, between certain global uh, curvature forms on the total space and uh, the harmonic representative. So that was the reason just uh, to look at, at this component. And if you want to see this uh, directly, so we have, uh, say, uh, D over DSI on the base, and then, we have, and then we have Z alpha on the fiber, then we have components of the curvature, uh, alpha, beta, bar, and uh, we have R, uh, uh, maybe I, J bar, okay. Now, this is the, the one uh, uh, which we know uh, from uh, the uh, Hermit Einstein condition. If we contract it, then we get uh, lambda times uh, the identity. And then we have, uh, sorry, this is a, so a J. And then we have this one. And if we write down this thing, dz beta bar, it'll be uh, harmonic. Here is the surprisingly simple proof. So we want to compute d bar star of this thing. And then we have a minus and a alpha g beta bar alpha. So we write it as r alpha beta bar uh, i and uh, g beta bar alpha. So the uh, metric on x doesn't depend on the parameter. So this is like uh, minus lambda times the identity. Uh, and then taking a horizontal derivative, but this is a cohomological uh, constant here, so this is obviously zero. So, uh, okay, so we have a, have a way uh, to handle uh, uh, computations. And uh, so, yeah, here is the well-known formula, and uh, here is the theorem. If we have a degeneration where uh, the holomorphic uh, vector bundles just degenerate as uh, coherent uh, sheaves, then we have an extension as a, uh, a positive 1-1 one, one current. And uh, so there, is, there are two parts. One is to handle singularities. I, I don't uh, want you, uh, th this is uh, uh, technical, obviously, one will, uh, blow up and down and do such things. But um, uh, in the smooth case, 
uh, it is just to look at the Donaldson invariant. So let's assume that E is locally free and uh, uh, for S uh, outside the set uh, A, uh, we have a, um, we have a, a stable uh, holomorphic uh, vector bundle. And uh, then uh, what we do is we, for instance, that is not necessary, but for instance, we use the heat e equation approach. Um, so we uh, start with an initial permission uh, metric, and uh, then we have this evolution uh, equation, which for t equals to equals infinity uh, gives us uh, the uh, uh, Hermit-Einstein uh, metric on the vector bundle. And so we can do this in a family, and also we can control at least the initial uh, Hermitian metric um, also at these uh, uh, singular points. And uh, so what we do is, while well, we look at, at the fiber integral formula, uh, then we first observe if, if lambda is not zero, then uh, this part here uh, will be constant. Uh, and uh, so we don't have to worry about this one. And uh, the next step uh, would be uh, uh, we use uh, secondary uh, bot churn forms. Uh, here is the uh, definition of uh, the second uh, bot churn form. And then we know we have this kind of formula. Now this thing has to be integrated over, over uh, the manifold. And as we have seen, uh, fiber integration uh, commutes with uh, taking hysteria derivatives. Now, oops, uh, now after integration, here we have something like a dd bar of a function. And uh, then, of course, if we allow uh, here for uh, the parameter from the heat equation, we know uh, from, uh, that, from Donaldson's work that, that this thing here is bounded from above uh, by zero. And if, we, if you look at this thing here, uh, this initial part is nicely behaved. We can see uh, that this will be, uh, well, C infinity, and then there is C infinity plus dd bar of something with a, which is bounded by zero. So um, uh, we can see that this, uh, the, the pluri uh, subharmonic function, uh, which we get here, um, uh, will be is bounded and as such um, extend as a plurisupharmonic function. Okay, uh, so this is how it uh, works for um, polymorphic uh, vector bundles. Then there is one thing, the dual D spaces. Here is a dual D space. And then, then comes a, a formula which you might find uh, very easy or say trivial, namely, we take uh, the scalar form of the ambient space, take a power which is just the um, uh, uh, n plus first uh, power, n being the dimension of uh, the fibers, and then we write down such a thing. So uh, there is a theorem of uh, Yanis Varoukas uh, which uh, tells us that this object possesses a, even a continuous uh, potential. Now, the, the point here is that this fiber integral actually represents something which we may want to call a weil peterson form. So we will be looking at uh, the uh, tangent space to a dual D space and identify harmonic representatives uh, of uh, these uh, uh, classes which are, yeah, uh, in a certain uh, group H0 of uh, uh, normal bundle. And um, so uh, here we, um, uh, the, the point is uh, somewhere else. And also it is not clear uh, from the beginning that this thing here will be positive uh, definite uh, on the dual D space, meaning if the family is effectively parametrized, meaning the Kodaira-Spencer map is injective, 
that this thing actually gives rise uh, to a positive definite uh, form. Okay, so the spirit somehow is still the same, but uh, uh, the situation is, uh, uh, the details are different. Yeah, the next example, Hurwitz space. Um, so the Hurwitz space uh, parameterizes uh, compact Riemann surfaces being realized as simple uh, coverings of uh, the projective line. And uh, uh, so the whole program can be pulled through, and um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, Weil-Peters on form can be extended uh, to the compactified uh, moduli space as a current. And um, uh, I just uh, uh, show you uh, the fiber integral formula, which is the following. Here is the Poincaré uh, metric, which we have seen before. If we write down C1 squared, we get a zero, and, uh, <clears throat> but, but we wedge the thing here uh, with the uh, curvature form of the uh, metric on the projective line of, of constant, uh, uh, of constant uh, curvature plus one. And then uh, we can see we have a, a Kähler form, we have an extension theorem, and yeah. Uh, maybe I can make some remark about uh, the case of uh, canonically polarized uh, manifolds. And uh, what are the objects? The objects are uh, Kähler, uh, well, are compact complex uh, manifolds such that the canonical uh, bundle is ample and uh, is such that the, um, uh, uh, we have the Kähler-Einstein uh, uh, metric uh, of constant uh, Ricci uh, curvature being equal to minus one according to Yao's uh, theorem. Um, here is the uh, Kodaira-Spencer map. And uh, now the curvature of the relative uh, canonical uh, bundle is of interest. So in the first place, we have the uh, relative uh, Kähler-Einstein form. So we have yeah, uh, omega uh, sub x over s. The next thing is uh, it gives us a relative volume form. So take the determinant uh, fiber-wise. So we have a relative uh, volume form, or if we take its inverse, uh, then we have a Hermitian metric on the relative canonical bundle. And uh, so uh, taking the Ricci uh, form fiber-wise, or taking uh, the curvature, the neg negative curvature uh, of the um, uh, fiber-wise uh, volume form, or taking the curvature of the uh, uh, relative uh, uh, canonical uh, bundle uh, is the same thing. And uh, so now we have something like a global 1-1 uh, form naturally uh, defined. And if we uh, restrict this global 1-1 form omega x, if we restrict it to a fiber, then uh, it means uh, from the definition here, this is just the Kähler-Einstein form on the fibers. So, so the Kähler-Einstein forms on the fibers in a natural way uh, fit together and come from a, a closed, uh, posit closed one one form. I, I, I'll say something about positivity in a minute. And um, uh, this is just the curvature of the uh, relative canonical uh, bundle equipped with the metric uh, originating uh, from the uh, volume forms on the fibers. Okay, here is the uh, fiber integral formula uh, up to powers of uh, two and uh, uh, pi. So it is just take this uh, naturally defined one one form on the total space and uh, uh, the fiber integral will uh, 
reproduce the uh, uh, vile Peterson form on the moduli space. Um, I can also say, but this is not what I'm going to talk about today, that um, uh, for a, an effective family, uh, omega uh, x, this thing here, is not just positive on the fibers, but also positive on the uh, total space, which uh, follows from a, a certain um, uh, elliptic uh, equation. Um, okay, so uh, for degenerating families, I claim that one can extend this thing as a positive current. Uh, then it has to be pushed down to the parameter space, which will be uh, some uh, fiber uh, integral, but we need to be very careful the uh, wedge product of uh, uh, currents in general is not a current. So one has to say a bit more. And uh, so uh, how does this work? We already saw with holomorphic uh, vector bundles that we need some well-behaved initial metric, which is still well-behaved uh, at the singular uh, points, and then use some mechanism, be it uh, the uh, heat equation or be it uh, the uh, Monge Ampere solution of the Monge Ampere equation in uh, the way uh, like uh, Yao did it, and uh, then we can do it. Uh, here is, say, the situation. <clears throat> We start uh, from a degenerating uh, family. So we, in the algebraic approach to moduli spaces, one would uh, look at uh, m-canonical uh, embeddings. And uh, uh, this uh, s here, the parameter s, would uh, stay uh, for some open part of the Hilbert scheme, uh, which also um, parameterizes degenerating embedded families in this way. Uh, and uh, the obvious uh, choice of a metric would be the uh, fobini studi metric on uh, the total space here, uh, on the projective uh, space. And uh, let me see. Uh, now we are looking at at what we are doing here. Namely, here is the, for sufficiently high M, we look at the uh, M canonical embedding. Then we want to see what is the pullback of the fubini studi metric. Now, the fubini studi metric is the curvature of the uh, fubini studi emission metric on the bundle O of 1. And if we pull back O of 1, by definition, what we get is uh, m times uh, the canonical bundle, or its uh, mth tenth of power. All right. So this is what we are doing here. We are pulling this back. And uh, so what it means is uh, we can produce a naturally given relative initial volume form and the crucial point is that it behaves nicely in the sense that it, in fact, is an algebraic object. And uh, so it will not have some transcendental uh, singularities, but it will have uh, uh, algebraic uh, uh, singularities in the sense of poles. Okay. And uh, here is the uh, curvature form of... Uh, this uh, initial volume form. This is our initial metric, which has to be uh, changed. And uh, uh, so this is actually then the way how we uh, start um, from a, a start in a degenerate situation from an initial uh, Kähler uh, form with singularities, uh, which is, uh, it can be controlled. Okay. Here is the uh, situation. We would like, what would it mean that we have a Keller-Einstein uh, metric? It would mean we start from a volume form. We take the negative curvature of the volume form. This would be our omega uh, zero uh, x. And then we would take 
the corresponding volume form, and it should uh, reproduce the original one. Of course, it won't never do this, and uh, e to the minus f is uh, uh, the uh, aberration. Okay, and okay, and here is the mange ampere equation, the usual one. So uh, this thing f has to be compensated by u, where uh, then the uh, Kähler-Einstein uh, metric or the family of relative Kähler-Einstein metric uh, will be given in this way. Okay. Now, the mange ampere equation is an elliptic equation, and uh, there one has a maximum principle, and the maximum and minimum principles uh, give us uh, a priori uh, uh, estimates, and uh, here is the C a priori estimates are the C0 estimates, Oops. and uh, so fiber-wise, the solution can be bounded by this function f, which tells us uh, how everything uh, does, uh, the, the uh, uh, f, which tells us uh, the way how the initial metric uh, fails. Okay, now, uh, we assume now that the singular set uh, is, uh, say, a divisor. Of course, this can always be done by blowing up uh, the set. And um, then we know it can only degenerate uh, up to a certain order. Let k be this order, and then we suddenly are in a situation uh, where we have a boundedness, uh, independent uh, of the choice of the parameter. What does it mean? Now, this factor here is immaterial for uh, computing the curvature. Why? If we write down dd bar log of this thing, it will be identically zero on the open part, so we don't change um, our uh, given Kähler-Einstein metric, so nothing happens. Okay, and then we have uh, bounded potentials, and we are in a good uh, situation, everything is fine. Uh, we uh, can extend uh, omega uh, uh, x, this form, as a fiber. Now, at this point, we are still on the total space, and we have to use the fiber integral formula to, put, to push everything forward. How does this work? So here is the fiber integral formula. No, I, okay. We write down this part, and we decompose it into two parts. The first one is the thing where we can apply Varuka's uh, theorem, because omega zero is well-behaved, and then this, the push forward uh, of the first uh, term uh, has a, even a continuous potential. So this is fine. Now let us uh, look at the second thing here. We know that the u's here are uniformly bounded, so we may want, and here this will be the potential. So the dd bar is sitting in front. So we can kind of estimate, take the, the, the estimate out of the integral, but then we are just left uh, with uh, the volume. So uh, this thing here is bounded from above by an upper bound of u times the volume. And so then also we uh, can uh, extend local potentials for the weil peterson uh, form uh, as a uh, plurisupermonic function, and that will be it. Okay. So this is what I just said. And uh, then we should say that uh, this situation is, uh, is the object of uh, current uh, work, and one should uh, uh, mention uh, uh, Takayama, Tosati, and others. Okay. Now, let me come to degenerating uh, families of calabi yau manifolds. This case uh, so far works in a different way. And uh, uh, so, what, what can we say? For us at this moment, a calabi yau uh, manifold is just a compact Kähler manifold um, uh, with vanishing first real, real churn class. 
There are other definitions which are more restrictive. This is the most general. And uh, according to your theorem, we have a Ricci flat uh, Kähler uh, metric uh, in any Kähler class. Okay. So it means we have a corresponding Ricci flat volume form, meaning uh, a DD bar log. Maybe there is a minus lacking, <clears throat> but, uh, but since uh, uh, since we get a zero, the equation is uh, still true. Um, and uh, so what we get is, uh, is a Ricci flat uh, volume form. All right. And so then we need to see what a polarization is. Usually this is not so much of an issue, but uh, at this point it is. There are two ways of uh, looking at, at a polarization in the Kähler uh, situation. Uh, polarization is a Kähler class, so uh, it'll be uh, a real 1-1 one, one class. And a polarization for a family is now, can be given in two ways. Like here, we have here this uh, analytic object, and here we have uh, the uh, topological one. And a polarized family can be uh, uh, given as follows. So I had been working uh, with uh, with this version here. So we uh, take an element, the holomorphic version is an element of this direct image sheave uh, such that the restrictions are polarizations of the fibers. And on the other hand, one can also uh, say uh, we take a section of this uh, direct image sheave uh, here uh, such that the restriction of this element lambda are polarizations for the fibers. So be it so. And uh, uh, so uh, then the first uh, thing to do is say this is equivalent. Um, so we will be looking at polarized families of Calabi Yau manifolds with families of Ritchie-Flat uh, volume forms. And uh, here is uh, uh, the relative. Uh, volume form, and then we are looking at the uh, curvature of the uh, relative canonical bundle. As I said, uh, this, this is uh, another way of uh, saying relative volume form. And let us call this uh, theta x, and of course we need it on uh, the whole space. Because fiber-wise, this thing is obviously uh, zero because of Ricci flatness. And, uh, uh, but then uh, we, we have a fiber integral formula. This one arises from a much more general situation of, say, extremal Kähler manifolds. And if one um, uh, specializes the formula, then this thing comes out. The, uh, Val Peterson form can be uh, computed uh, from the first relative churn form, wedge it with uh, form omega x to the power n, where omega x to the power n is uh, a representative, so to speak, uh, of the relative volume form. Uh, certainly, this thing is not unique. Because if we add a pullback of any one one form uh, from the base, if we add this to, to the form omega x, we get, get another one with a, uh, a similar property. So we need to normalize this thing, and the normalization is given uh, by uh, a certain fiber integral, namely this one being zero. And one, okay. But uh, more is true. And uh, it's hard to attribute this uh, theorem to a specific author. So I leave this open. Um, so this um, is the following. If we are looking at a family of Calabi Yau manifolds with a polarization, then we can say the following. This uh, the curvature form of the relative canonical bundle is actually up to a normalizing factor, the pullback of the Weil Peterson form. What does it mean? It means that there are no um, uh, 
uh, there are no mixed terms, horizontal, vertical terms for the uh, uh, curvature form. And moreover, the horizontal terms are the same no matter uh, which uh, lift to, the, to a fiber we take. So this is the pullback. And um, so uh, what can I say here about the, uh, the method? Um, the method is uh, the following. What we need is a classical uh, a theorem of Calabi in this context. Uh, which would uh, say uh, Calabi, uh, it says that um, holomorphic tensors on a, uh, on a Calabi Yau uh, manifold uh, are parallel. And then we are looking at this thing here which is uh, I d d bar log of g. And uh, so it uh, uh, contains uh, uh, various components. Um, I beta bar theta alpha j bar theta i j bar. OK. So uh, this is already uh, zero because of Ricci flatness. And uh, now this thing here, uh, while well, satisfies the following, let's take a derivative here in the fiber direction, but a non-conjugate derivative. So as, as before, we have the coordinate z alpha on the fibers xs. And uh, we have uh, SI coordinates on the base S. And uh, now uh, we are looking at this thing, all right? So this is uh, I beta bar uh, uh, I. Uh, so this thing here is obviously zero. And also say, I alpha j, uh, and then I put here a beta bar, is equal to zero, which means that uh, theta uh, uh, alpha j bar dz alpha is holomorphic. So this is one crucial point. And uh, then the next one is uh, one needs um, elliptic equations equations for theta. And uh, then one would introduce uh, uh, what, uh, one arrives at a certain equation. This thing is, say, C theta. The holomorphic uh, one is uh, this one. Uh, alpha j squared, norm squared, uh, uh, pointwise. All right, now we can all integrate such, <coughs> such an equation and derive that this thing has to be zero. And uh, <coughs> so uh, in order to, to do here one, one has to go more into uh, details about um, uh, the uh, uh, geometry of the situation. Okay. Uh, then one would need the Green's function for Laplacians on fibers, and then one has a theorem uh, with uh, Matthias Braun and uh, Yang Jun Choi. Uh, or, yeah, I, I cannot pronounce this correctly, but uh, the uh, writing is here. Uh, we, we need some assumption for a family on the polarization. Uh, it doesn't mean that this, this thing is a little too general. So what we need is that this is constant. So for instance, it is the image of a 1-1 one, one form. 
So in particular, if, if it comes from a global Kähler form, this is fine. Or if we assume that uh, the B1 uh, of the fibers is zero, then uh, we uh, can say that there exists a Kähler form on the total space uh, such that uh, the fibers are Ricci flat. Um, of course, locally, uh, with respect to the base, one can always achieve uh, such a situation, but this is not the issue in this uh, theorem. Uh, the question is, when is uh, uh, such an assumption on the Green's function on functions being uh, satisfied? And uh, it is closely related uh, to bounding the diameter of the fibers. Okay, and uh, the next question is, uh, when, when are the diameters bounded? And of course, in the situation of, uh, of compact uh, Riemann surfaces, this is practically uh, never the case. But in higher dimensions, it's uh, not so common, <clears throat> provided one knows something uh, about uh, the singularities. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, the situation of uh, uh, projective families of Calabi-Yau manifolds, the assumption uh, is, uh, uh, it can, can be uh, achieved. And uh, uh, then uh, 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 there are uh, more uh, results here. Now comes uh, the question about uh, extending the vial peters on form as a positive uh, one one current. And uh, so we are talking about the situation of a, a, a proper open surjective holomorphic mapping of Kähler manifolds. And we assume that <clears throat> every uh, regular fiber is a Calabi Yau manifold. And uh, then, of course, uh, uh, we, we have a, a polarization in the sense of uh, the previous theorem. And uh, so uh, here comes the previous uh, normalization. And here is uh, the theorem. The above metric on the relative canonical bond bundle extends as a singular Hermitian metric of uh, positive curvature. Here, positive has to be uh, taken in the sense of currents, meaning large or equal to zero. And uh, then uh, we know that we get a, a declosed uh, positive uh, current uh, for the curvature, from the curvature of the relative canonical bundle on the total space. And uh, so the methods are, uh, depend on uh, uh, an argument of uh, Mihai Paun uh, using uh, de Maggi's uh, approximation theorem for plurisupermonic functions and the Ozawa Takigoshi theorem, it'll be slightly uh, technical. Um, the first thing is how can we descend now everything to the uh, uh, base, to the Weil-Peters on form? And here we come with a, uh, uh, well, naive formula. We take the Weil-Peters on form, pull it back to the family, wedge it with a volume form, and uh, push it forward. So, so this is this integral here. And obvious, obviously, we know that this comes uh, from the base up to a, a, a factor volume of x. This is theta. Now, the, at this point, we are looking at the right-hand side. And theta uh, will be extended. And for the extensions, we have no idea whether we have suddenly horizontal components or not. Uh, I mean, mixed components and everything. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we take uh, the, the right-hand side. We take the right-hand side as a definition for the extension. And so obviously, then, we extend the Weil-Peters on form once we can extend capital theta. Uh, well, and uh, there have to be um, uh, certain uh, precautions uh, to handle wedge products, as before also. Uh, we are using the, the uh, wedge product of the positive currents in the sense of Bedford-Taylor, so removing a DD bar uh, from, the form, uh, from, a, from the form 
writing it locally in terms of a potential. And so the corollary of the theorem is that the Wild Peterson form extends to S as a positive closed current. Okay, here is the uh, extension theorem. And the first thing is, in a sing singular uh, situation, what is the relative canonical bundle? And uh, algebraic geometry tells us that this is the definition for the situation, that the total space is smooth, the base is smooth, but the fibers may be singular. Then we uh, take uh, the uh, right-hand side as a uh, definition, and this has to be taken uh, into account in terms of uh, local coordinates. So one would, of course, uh, be careful. Uh, uh, so it would mean we take, we take a, a volume form uh, on X and divide it by a volume form, the pullback of a volume form downstairs. Uh, this uh, sounds rather dubious, but actually such an uh, uh, approach does work. And uh, here is the corresponding equation. And what we can see is at the singularities, of course, the, the, this pullback here be, may be zero. And so this e to the psi u uh, will be zero, meaning that psi u uh, could be singular, uh, could be uh, minus infinity or is minus infinity at singular points. Now we compute the curvature. And uh, then we use the uh, Ricci flat uh, volume form from the previous uh, theorem. And uh, so uh, this is then uh, the way how to handle it. Um, and let me see uh, what the next step is. Here is the Monge Ampere equation uh, fiber wise. And so then, uh, well, you realize that we uh, well, can write down fiber-wise Monge Ampere equations and kind of globalize these by wedging everything with a pullback of a, a, a Euclidean a volume form from the base. And this is what happens here. Um, now, the curvature form near singular points can be computed. And the reason why I wrote this thing down is that this now is our local potential for the curvature of the relative canonical bundle. And what we need is we already know that this uh, uh, is semi-positive. So the uh, eta plus uh, uh, psi uh, u is on the is uh, 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 plurisubharmonic on, on the open part. And all we have to do is we have to bound this thing. And then we would use the uh, Ozawa Takigoshi theorem. I wrote down this statement, but um, let me first say why we would need this. What is the idea? Uh, we want to approximate pluri functions by a uh, sum of this form, uh, absolute value squared of a holomorphic function, take a sum, infinite or not, uh, finite or not, and take the logarithm. This thing uh, is uh, uh, plurisubharmonic, and by definition, this is more or less uh, uh, the meaning of analytic singularity. So we can approximate this thing. And then it is meaningful uh, to apply the Ozawa uh, Takegoshi uh, theorem. The point is, we have, say here, a singular fiber. Here we have a smooth uh, uh, fiber. And what we do is we have holomorphic uh, functions, sigma k, and uh, with a certain boundedness property. And uh, the meaning of the Osawa Takegoshi theorem is if we can bound the uh, L2 norms in a certain way, uh, then we can find a holomorphic function on the total space with, uh, which extends the function here and with uh, bound on the uh, L2 uh, norm. But the point is this has to be done for all, for all S. 
uh, and uh, for any s we have a, have a different thing so so we uh, uh, need to uh, uh, overcome these uh, diffi difficulties and this means that the weight function in the definition of the uh, Ozawa Takegoshi theorem uh, will be uh, uh, multiplied uh, with a factor m and this is what uh, uh, Pound did in his approach and uh, uh, now comes the some machinery on Hilbert spaces uh, of uh, uh, functions, uh, uh, holomorphic uh, functions with a certain bounded uh, L2 norms. And, uh, okay, let me see. And here we have, uh, have the thing theta which we want to bound. And uh, so it'll be bounded by the logarithms of holomorphic functions with the previous norm being bounded. And all I wanted to show, for, show you is the following. Um, we have now this thing, uh, 1 over m, which has to uh, work to our advantage. And uh, well, here is the proof of, of this theorem, which I certainly uh, won't go into details in the last, whatever, 60 seconds. Um, and. Um, so the point here is maybe this thing here. Uh, the constant Cs rising in this situation, of course, depend, have to depend on the parameter. But uh, fortunately, there is this factor 1 over m in front. So this can be uh, a kind of uh, forgotten for m equal to 0. And here are, and this is uh, this kind of thing where eventually this term disappears, which would be bad because it depends on the, uh, on the parameter. And of course, the constant um, CS will deteriorate when we go to the singularities. So uh, the point is first um, uh, to do it uh, for all S's and then let M go to infinity, not the other way around. Okay, and uh, here is, uh, uh, so there exist uh, uh, details which I cannot talk about, and this is finally the, the last uh, step. And um, let me see uh, which finally gives us the extension theorem. Uh, all I want to say is the following, why are we interested in this extension theorem in the, well, uh, uh, this is the following, if we have a Hermitian um, holomorphic uh, line bundle, where the curvature form can be extended as a current, then in the singular case, after blowing up the uh, boundary or the singular set, then the line bundle uh, can be extended uh, as a holomorphic line bundle with a singular Hermitian metric, meaning uh, a singular Hermitian metric of uh, a positive uh, curvature. And uh, so uh, concerning uh, projective embeddings, one can also say something, but maybe it's uh, 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 I stop at this point. Thank you very much. Questions? Okay.